Well, hello there and welcome to Travels with Jordy. My name is Peter and this good looking fellow here is Jordy and we live together on a classic wooden motor cruiser in Victoria, British Columbia, all the while fixing it up for some pretty extensive cruising. If that's the sort of thing you might be interested in, why don't you consider sticking around and subscribing? We'd love to have you. All right, Pop, let's go. We're back home which means maintenance season and what that means with the wood boat mostly is sanding and varnishing and well I am way behind lots of problem areas to deal with um, the thwarts varnish I put on them over the winter completely failed lots to do uh, so not all that interesting sanding varnishing sanding varnishing I'll see if I can uh, avoid putting you through too much of it so along with varnishing, the other big project for summertime is dealing with leaks. Yes, the boat leaks. Wooden boats tend to leak. I've dealt with so many of them so far, but I still have half a dozen, of which three or four are really driving me nuts. There's one right here. You can see tape covering a split in the fiberglass sheathing over this section of the deck. Um, there had been lots of leaks in here too, which have been dealt with. Uh, there's a couple of leaks around the windows, most of which have been dealt with. Um, this window, I think I've mentioned before, is actually like an RV plastic slider uh, that someone stuck some wood trim on. It did relatively well. Um, they don't leak now that I've drilled drain holes in the channel, and they work actually remarkably well. Um, this window, I've totally dealt with the leaks. Opening window doesn't leak. Biggest leak I have are the windshield, and I think it's pretty chronic on boats like this because Every wooden boat I've ever seen has got trouble around the windshield. In fact, this windshield's already been rebuilt dealing with leaks. Um, it's coming in two or three different places. Uh, for certainly where the cabin top meets this brow piece, I've sealed it before and I've improved it drastically, but I'll tell you about how I'm going to improve that. It certainly leaks right at the base of the windshield. I don't know if you can see this with the light, and I've done some serious caulking there. I think there's also been some leaks through dry splits in various areas here which I have some tape over over the winter to try and keep the worst of it so that's got to be dealt with it's just I can't have another season leaks like that and I want to show you a couple of products I use to deal with some of these leaks I gotta apologize all day today there was someone running a pressure washer on the next dock so it has made some rather annoying background noise now I don't want to endorse any particular products but I do like to share products that I like and I use this is Secaflex 291 um, very, very common. Anyone in the wood boat industry knows about this. Um, some people love it, some people hate it. I love it. I find it's very, very tough, very flexible. Um, it's sandable, which is huge when you're doing work on a wooden boat because it means you can put it in a joint in wood and then sand it flush again and it, it just works out really well. It's like poor man's uh, teak deck compound. This is my go-to uh, sealant. Um, remember, I'm not using the word caulking because that's something else on wooden boats. I want to show you another product. This is called Captain Tollies. Now, it says finds and fixes leaks. What it is is something that I thought years ago would be perfect. It's basically a sealant that's as thin as water because if water is leaking in through all the little cracks and voids in the boat, well, if only the water could get in and then harden. Well, that's what this does. Um, I'm not sure what it is. It works. It works when you first put it in. When you first put it in, you let it soak and let it soak and let it soak, and it will seal up a leak 100%. Works great. Uh, within the reason, you know, the realm of a very small void. It doesn't bridge gaps at all. That's what sealant is for. But anyway, the problem is it doesn't seem to last. Um, maybe it dries very hard, and then if there's motion, it shears it and breaks it and shatters it and starts to leak again. Maybe it's affected by UV. Maybe. It, for some reason, it doesn't seem to keep a leak. Um, now, I'd like to pay more attention to this, use more, and then always follow up with a cover-up of um, an actual sealant to make sure at least that UV is getting out of there and maybe stabilizing the joint a bit. I don't know, but this is going to be my approach. There's lots I'm going to share with you on this leak management because I'm going to deal with it this season. And I'll put links to both those products down in the description. Okay, so let's actually review the individual techniques I'm going to use here. Um, starting at the top, this joint in here, the cabin top was fiberglassed. You can see some splits in it, some failure in it. So the cabin top needs, really it needs sanding, fairing, finding all the splits, hollowing them out, and 
new fiberglass patches put and then sand sanded back and repainted massive job not going to happen soon and certainly not going to happen here at the marina so i have to be able to come up with some temporary measures for that and i think i'll be able to deal with that this joint in here has been a chronic problem and i've largely sealed it in the past but i want to deal with it properly so what i'm going to do i'm going to sand it out so i get to clean fiberglass and clean teak i'm going to use lots and lots of the captain tollies and then I'm going to finish it up with a bed of sealant and I think that will probably deal with that permanently. Actually the same technique here in the windows. You can see I have an emergency bed of sealant in here that I put in uh, last fall and that's actually been working perfectly. I just need to tidy that up. Of course it's very difficult to sand against the glass but that's a problem. This joint is a problem. Let me show you in an easier place to look at it. Between the cabin sides and where the deck rolls up. This deck was fiberglass in the not too distant future and they glassed up and I'm not quite sure what they did here but you can see there's a split all the way along. Basically, I'm not sure how much of this original. I don't know if that little curb is original but I have it and I'm gonna leave it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut a little reglet and that means a little trough, a little groove basically right along where that split is hoping to catch the top of the fiberglass and a clean edge of the bottom of the mahogany and then I'm going to fill that again with the 291, which will be somewhat flexible, the sealant, and sand it smooth. And hopefully that gives me some, some protection in there because I know that it's leaking in through here. And this leaks into a place where I do not want water because it gets in under the deck and that is rot. Now, fortunately, I have no real trouble left that I know of. Uh, there's a little trouble in here, but that's easily going to be dealt with. As some of you know, this is all going to be rebuilt this, of course, is rubbish and it's coming off and will be rebuilt in uh, new uh, mahogany plywood. And this uh, cabin top will extend down here. That is not a project for this summer. I would love to be doing it, but I just can't get it done this year. Too much else to do. Now, again, talking about fiberglass cabin tops. From here to here, this is soft underneath. You can tell by the sound of it. Whereas up there it's solid, well this is actually loose fiberglass with rotten wood underneath. The way the deck was made, it's plywood to here, and then it's a bunch of slats of some sort of wood uh, to create this curve here. And it got wet and it got bad. So I have to peel all this fiberglass out, dig out all the rotten wood, lay in all new stuff, and then re-glass it. It's got to be done sooner than later, because trying to keep this from leaking with bits of tape and things is starting to become a bit of a fool's game. So. Not quite sure what I'm going to do there, but something's got to be done. These stanchion bases leak. This one leaks quite badly, um, so I have to deal with that. And I'll show you what kind of cheap solution I have for that. Um, have some problems down here. This isn't necessarily a leak, but there were so many generations of bungs uh, put in this section of the cabin side where it met the bulkhead here. And I'm trying to tie these up somewhat. Um, I put some tape over it over the winter to try and keep moisture out, but all that really does is trap moisture in and it pulled the var. Anyway, it's just a mess. So I have to cut all new bungs for here, try to get them really clean, have to find some, some Honduran mahogany, which I have a line on, and tidy that up. As you can see, the bright work on the boat is, it's suffering. I haven't been able to really get it good. It's not bad, but last year I probably only got two coats of varnish on, and you need six. As you can see, certainly the thwarts didn't survive with one coat put on over the winter inside. So I got to get caught up on that a little bit. And that means some sanding back down to bare wood in some places, but I'll cope with that. And I hate to re-sand because I don't want to take off any more wood. Anyway, enough of that for now. Let's get some actual work done. So at each of these splits in the fiberglass, um, this actually, I've just taken the tape off. What you see is the, the sticky residue from the tape. I'm actually going to cut them open. I mean, they're leaking. So I got to cut them open enough that I can get a little sealant in there down in that split. And uh, th again, this is only a temporary measure until I can refiberglass the decks, but that is not happening anytime soon. So I'll let these dry out in the sun. And then uh, when I think they're good and dry, I'll start pumping some of that Captain Tolly's in here. Cleaning out this joint between the cabin top and this brow rail, taking a multi-step approach because I want to get a really clean surface for um, the sealant and the caulking to attach to um, the sealant and the tollies. Anyway, so I start with some relatively rough sandpaper just in there. And I'm bringing that down over the brow a little bit because I'm going to want to re-varnish this and I want to be able to get 
uh, up into underneath where the clocking is, the sealant is going to go. So a little bit again on the fiberglass. So I get down to clean fiberglass you can see in there. I can just start to see the cloth of the fiberglass so I don't want to cut into it too much. Then I'll take some finer stuff and just smooth that out a little bit in both directions. I know I'm going to be sanding here later to try and tidy this up and deal with all the splits in the fiberglass but I only want to come up a quarter inch or so to deal with the caulking, the sealant. And then I'm going to finish off with basically I use a, a putty knife or something and sandpaper fold it over it so I can get right down into that crack. Like that. So that's about as clean as I can expect it. We'll clean up with a stainless steel brush. Wipe it down with a little acetone. Get, make sure I get all the dust out of there nice and clean. All right, let that dry and we'll hit that with the Captain Tollies. Okay, so here we go with the Captain Tollies. Um, you'll see it comes out kind of milky, which makes it wonder um, what material it is, but it definitely does soak down in there. You'll see I've also opened up two really big blisters here, which I'll have to repair properly later, but in the meantime, let's just see if we can get some of this stuff to wick in here. Various places. This has to be repaired properly. This is kind of buckshy, but in the meantime, maybe it'll creep under and seal it up a little bit. Okay. As you can see where it soaks in and it uh, drains away so you can add more. It doesn't harden all that quickly, so get a pretty good idea of where it needs more. Anyway, you've seen enough of this. Okay, so getting the uh, sealant out of the windshield frame uh, is, I mean, not that miserable a task. It's just a matter of being careful. Uh, you can see I'm pulling out at least three generations of different sealants, um, probably failing in spots. Anyway, it's time um, that it was redone properly. I am kind of ashamed that I uh, never really did this yet, uh, knowing that this was going to be a chronic problem. Anyway, let me dig this out and see if I can clean it up. In the Land Rover world, Land Rover. Um, we have an expression called ship fitters disease. It's where you start taking something apart and you don't know where to stop. Ah, there's some trouble in here and I can't fix it, but I have to patch it. Of course, none of what I'm doing here is a proper repair, but within the constraints of time, money, and the ability to work here at the marina, I can't take on a project like this right now at all, but I do have to stop the leak. Um, some of you will be saying, well, you're just not going to stop the leak like that. <sighs> got to try. Holy crikey, it's hot. Okay, so I've got the windshields cleaned out enough that I can put the captain's tollies in. And uh, with any luck, um, I can get lots of that in there and it'll seal that up. And then I can follow up with some caulking tomorrow. It's certainly taking a lot of it. As it wicks its way down in there. Okay, other side. You don't need to watch. All right, well, after a shower and a bit of a cool off and a clean up, I'm feeling a lot better about this. It's actually going very well. Um, I showed you that little mess on the port side there where I thought of it as ship fitter's disease. Um, it's not actually that bad, and there's nothing else really that's terrifically horrible on this. At some point in the not close future i'm gonna to have to rebuild the windshield and redo it all mahogany again but that won't be soon anyway another couple of days of cleaning it up and uh, fixing all the little cracks and leaks and stuff like that and then new varnish and this should be in much better shape i do have one more little inside project on zephyrus and that's to mount these little sconce lights these beautiful little bronze lamps were originally in the aft corners there of the wheelhouse but we're going to figure something else for there because they're just perfect for what we planned to put right here in fact we just got some cute little shades for them uh, gold on the inside we'll see what that looks like when we get the lights on anyway but i have to build a little panel here basically just a little strip of wood that will be a wire chase and something to support that so i'm going to pull that off today because it'd be really nice to have these because we're going out cruising again soon
Okay, gonna get going with the little project for the sconce lights and I found a piece of wood under the bed that's just perfect for it. As the boat is currently in liveaboard mode and Jordy is definitely not going to appreciate uh, me running a saw and a router in here, I'm gonna do this workout on the dog. Unfortunately, the saw and the router table are under the bed. Yeah, okay, let's get to work. If ever there was a perfect day to run a table saw outside, it's today. I don't know if you can hear the seriously loud music coming from downtown from that car show thing. And then someone down the dock here is chopping windows out of a new aluminum Dodger, hard Dodger. So, noise on the dock today is uh, reasonably tolerable. Okay, so now we'll cut these to length. I'll use the sliding square for this, but it doesn't have to be perfectly, perfectly perfect. Okay, so the next question is about which tool to use. Um, I think I showed you I'm going to have to plow out a trough down the back uh, to about here to put uh, the wire in, to hide the wire when it goes up against the uh, cabin side. But I also want to route some edges on it, make it a little softer, so I'm pretty sure I want to get the rudder table out, which means I'll probably plow the trough with the rudder table rather than the table saw. I don't know. Let's go get the rudder table. And as a result, we're done with the table saw. Okay. okay, so I've set the depth and I've set the fence back um, for the start cut and then I'm just going to move the fence over as I cut deeper and deeper troughs. The thing is, I'm going to be cutting in this direction actually. And I need to know where to stop so that I cut to there. So I just put a mark here and I just temporarily put a mark there. And as I'm sliding along here when I get to there, I know where I am. Cool. Mark out some tiny little radius corners here and cut out with the jigsaw. Tidy them up with sandpaper. Beauty. Okay, now. I could route these edges. I want to put a little bit of an ease on them, but a little more of an ease than I can really do with sandpaper. So I think I will route it. I'm just going to sand the ease into them. That's about how much I want. Nice, 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 nice. And finally, get a little of my favorite wipe on poly on here. There we go. Um, some of you will remember that normally I put the first coat of tongue oil, but we're looking for a little instant gratification with this particular thing. So we're gonna go straight to the wipe on poly. It's gonna look great. And do the back as well, just so that it's sealed. Alright. Oh jeez, it's hot. Anyway, well as I wait for that wipe on poly to dry, I'm going to start to prepare the, um, the lamps themselves. Now these are beautiful. These are cast bronze and the quality of the basic fittings, the switch, etc. Look at that switch. It's got screw terminals on it. And when I get to show you this, um, the terminal for the uh, bayonet light also has tiny little, I don't want to pull this through because I don't put any tension on it. This is a tiny little porcelain casting with tiny, tiny little screw terminals on them to hold the wires, little spring loaded pins. It's, it's just, it's just lovely. It's absolutely just beautifully made. And uh, I'm just going to tidy it up a little, clean it up and rewire it. There we go. And take these tiny, tiny little screws out here. My gosh, that is a beautifully made thing. Beautiful. Okay, so the little terminals on the switch um, were really set up just to wrap the wire around and, um, and pinch with the screw. So what I could do is just take the wire and tin the end with some solder to make it a reasonable ring. But actually, um, this small um, loop connector uh, does actually fit inside. So that's what I'm gonna do for that. Easy. All right, let's put it back together. All 
Okay, some shrinkage. Now, I gotta tell you, I absolutely love things that can be perpetually repaired, like this, like wooden boats, like Land Rovers. Yeah. Okay, this is gonna be a bit of a fiddle. Now, these are stainless steel screws, not correct for this, uh, but they'll form the holes and I'll find some nice brass screws to replace them with a nice pan head on them. All right. All right, let's uh, put a bulb back in. This bulb is a bit shaky, but it might still work. Can you see that lit up? Okay, now I'm gonna figure out how to put the shade on. Oh, I'll be so glad to get rid of these bulky stainless steel screws. So here are the bulbs we bought for here. Um, LED. Um, and uh, warm and fairly small, so I'm hoping that will look relatively nice. It seems it, uh, we won't know until it gets dark. All right, so let's figure out a way to put the shade on here. All right, gotta wait till it's dark. And here we have them at night. We have a very dim bulb in them now, but I think they just look great. And the starboard side. Love them. Well, hello and welcome to Beer of the Week. It's late. I'm just back from the pub. I thought I might do a beer week at the pub, but it just wasn't possible, which is great because I'm really excited about what I have. Back to my favorite brewery, Driftwood Brewery, for their seasonal sun of the morning. It's considered a extra strong ale. This is a 10% beverage. Um, so we'll, we'll see how we do with that. But anyway, I'm really looking forward to it. I love all the seasonals from Driftwood. Let's see how she pours. Much lighter than I thought, but no harm in that. Oh yeah. Well, it is definitely 10%. Goodness. Wow. That is, it tastes like a cask beer. It tastes, goodness, it's very, very interesting. It's just a really bold cask type, um, almost with like a hint of like a whiskey or scotch. It's as if it was aged in a scotch barrel. Anyway, I love it. Oh my gosh. I don't think I better drink all of it. Yes. Mm, no doubt. Well, that is absolutely fantastic. So let me take this opportunity with this extra special beer to thank James Bennett, Kevin Hughes, and Eyes of Phil Art, who are this week's new patrons uh, from both Patreon and PayPal. I'm very grateful for you coming aboard. Thanks ever so much. Mm. Wow. Yeah, um, that's going to slow me down if I have too much of that. Mm. 